Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about two git commands, git merge and git rebase, the first of which people seem pretty comfortable with, the latter maybe strikes some fear into their hearts. Real quick, I want to tell you about my brand new git and github course I just launched. It covers all sorts of git and github topics ranging from the basics, adding and committing and branching and merging, to stashing and diffing, resetting, reverting and restoring. We talk about git and github and collaboration workflows, branch protection rules, pull requests, forking and cloning, working with open source projects. And then we talk about things like annotated tags and squashing and interactive rebasing, how git works behind the scenes and hashing and blobs and trees. There's a lot of good stuff in the course, so if you're interested, uh, the link's in the description and I'll shut up, but let's get back to merging and rebasing. So both rebasing and merging are two ways of solving the same problem. There are two ways of integrating changes from one branch into a second branch. So here I've diverged, I've created a feature branch, and in the meantime, master has changed. There's four commits on master, and I may want to integrate them into feature. I could rebase or I could merge. Now, in my experience teaching, uh, a lot more people are familiar and comfortable with merge. So let's start with that. The git merge command is going to take some branch, whatever we specify, in this case, bug fix, and merge it onto the existing branch. And the way that it does that depends on the structure of those branches. So the simplest example is called a fast forward merge, where uh, we have one branch and then we've diverged from that first branch but nothing has changed on that initial branch in the meantime. So in order to merge these together, I could switch to the master branch, and then all I would need to do is run git merge bug fix, merge the bug fix branch into master, and all that happens is that the master pointer moves forward to catch up on those two commits that it's missing. It's no longer missing them, and it would really look more like this to visualize that there's no diagonal line. Uh, it's just a series of commits, so let me demonstrate this, and then we'll go on to merge commits and then on to rebasing. So let me quickly demonstrate uh, and create a new repository for us. So I'm gonna pretend we're working on a website. So I'm gonna touch a website.html file, or maybe index.html, and I ran git init. Let's run our very first commit. So I first need to add that file, and then commit. And uh, my commits are gonna follow a pattern here. So I'm on the master branch, or I will be, currently there is no branch, and I'm gonna name each of these commits on the master branch with M, one, two, three, and so on. And then on my other branch, like the feature branch, I'll do F1 or something like that. Uh, so I'll just go with create index file. Okay, so the contents of this don't matter, but I have a new empty HTML file right here. Now I'm gonna form a branch. So I'm gonna use the git switch command. It's the newer way of doing it. You can use git checkout or just git branch. Uh, so git switch dash C will switch me over to a new branch that I'm gonna create. I'll call this one feet slash navbar maybe. Okay, so this will be my feature branch. And I'm gonna open this up in git kraken. Here we are. So git kraken is a GUI that I like to use when I'm teaching. Uh, I'll hopefully zoom in in post-production. We have two branch references pointing to the same commit. But now I'm gonna make a new commit on the feature branch. So I'm on the feature branch now. Let's say we're working on a navbar. So I'm gonna make a navbar.html file. This is all kind of trivial pretending here. Uh, I'm gonna make a new commit. So I'll add that navbar, get commit-m, and we're on a feature branch. So I'm gonna name this commit or give it a commit message of f1-something. So f1-create, um, navbar file. And then I'm going to do the same thing for a second commit. Uh, let's just write the word nav in here. And then I'll make a new commit. I'll do a commit am instead of having to add that file first. This will be f2, my second commit on this branch. Uh, begin navbar work. Begin work on navbar. And then one more, I'll write the word bar in here. So we have our finished nav bar. Pretend this has been hours of work. I'll do another add and commit. This will be F3, our third commit on the feature branch. Uh, I don't know, how about wrap up basic nav bar? Okay. So if I look in git kraken, we have our master branch right here, just one commit. And then we diverged with our feature branch that now has three commits. So if I want to incorporate these changes into the master branch, 
It's just a matter of having master catch up. There's no additional work on the master branch. So to do this, we switch over to the master branch and then we run git merge with our feature branch. So I'm going to switch to master. You'll see the navbar file is gone, right? Just index, it's an empty file. And then git merge and then the name of my branch I'm merging in, which is feet slash navbar. And it tells me, fast forward, you can see I have the changes here on my master branch. And now we have master and the feet slash navbar branch reference referring to the same exact commit. But as we've talked about, not all merges are fast forwards. So that's just a special case. But often what will happen is we'll be working on some feature branch. In my diagrams, it's a bug fix branch. And in the meantime, additional work happens on the master branch. So just one commit here. Uh, and if I wanted to merge my bug fix in to the master branch, I want everyone else, I want the master branch or the main branch or trunk or whatever we use as the branch name, I want this branch to have my work, my bug fix that I've been working on. Uh, it's not a matter of fast forwarding anymore. There's commits over here that don't exist on this branch, and there's commits on this branch that don't exist on master. So what happens is that instead of performing a fast forward, Git has to generate a merge commit. So it's going to take all of the changes from my feature branch, in this case, bug fix, and it's going to replay them and generate a new commit based on those changes. So it kind of condenses that stuff down into this new commit. We call it a merge commit. We'll be prompted to enter a commit message, and then we have a new commit on the master branch, right? So I'm gonna demonstrate this, and the easiest way uh, to do that is just to undo that merge and just have master go back to this commit right here where it was. So one option to do this uh, is just to take the commit hash that I wanna go back to, I'll grab that and do a git reset dash dash hard. I'm on the master branch. Okay, so now if I take a look at git log, there's just one commit on master. We're back to where we were. So now I'm going to make uh, some new commits on the master branch. So I'm on master now. So let's imagine that uh, I have collaborators who have made some changes uh, in the meantime. While I'm working on my nav bar, I don't know, somebody named Wanda, Wanda's feature is merged in or incorporated in some way to the master branch. So I'm going to add that change. I'll pretend I'm Wanda and our message will be M2, just to keep with the pattern, uh, you know, add Wanda's feature, something like that. And then let's do at least one more. Uh, let's do a, I don't know, Hagrid. Our good friend Hagrid has been working hard on a feature and he merges that in. So we'll add that change and then do M3 for the third commit on the master branch, add Hagrid's feature. Okay, so now we've diverged, right? This, there's no fast forward merging that could happen. So here's master, right? We have these two commits that navbar does not have. Uh, and what I wanna do is the same thing. I'm gonna try and merge this in to master. So let's do that right now. I'm on master, no changes here that are uncommitted. I'm going to git merge feature slash navbar. So git is going to replay these commits. Well, it replays the changes and generates a new commit on the master branch. And it's gonna prompt me to enter uh, a message. So depending on the editor you have configured, uh, Git will open it up for me, it's VS code. I'll leave this message alone, the default is fine. Merge branch feet slash navbar. I'll close out and now notice right there, there's a dot on Git Kraken. That's how it indicates a merge commit. So there's an actual new commit right there. I can also do a Git log and you'll see we have a commit, right? Let me make this a bit larger. Here is that merge commit. All right, so that's the basic idea of a merge commit. And it's not a big deal. Merge commits happen frequently. They're a part of life or a part of Git. Uh, one thing I wanna highlight before we go on to rebasing though, is that merges of all types are forward focused. It's not the official term, but hopefully uh, I can explain what I mean by that. No existing Git history on either branch none of their existing commits are changed. That history is exactly the same. So this branch is untouched, this is untouched. All that changes is a new commit might be generated if there's a merge commit going forward. So now we get to the dark side of merging, which is a very dramatic way of, of basically saying there's an issue that some people don't like with merging a lot, which is 
that your history can be very cluttered. So imagine that I'm working on some project, uh, a very large project, lots of collaborators, where I make a feature branch, like everyone else, I'm working on a feature and it's taking me a while. In the meantime, while I'm still working, other collaborators make changes and push them, merge them into master. So uh, I want those changes on my feature branch. I don't want to just diverge away from master uh, over, let's say, a long period as I'm working on this feature. I want to try and stay up to date and as close to master as possible, get those changes so that I can incorporate them into what I'm working on. So uh, I, I need to merge, right? With what we know so far, if I do a merge, I get a merge commit on my feature branch. So to be clear, I didn't merge into master. I'm still working, but I'm merging master into feature. So then I keep working and I'm still not done. And I'll multiply this by a lot. Instead of just four commits or three commits and a merge commits, imagine I'm doing a lot more and I'm having to merge frequently. There's always new work happening uh, from coworkers, collaborators, they're updating master. I need to merge that. Yet another merge commit. And this is what people, some people don't like. Uh, you can have a ton of merge commits on really active projects. And an example like this is not bad, right? We're talking about two merge commits, I guess, not the end of the world. But if this is a big project and every feature branch has tons of merge commits uh, and you have a lot of collaborators and they're constantly making merge commits, the history can be very muddy, messy. So this is not that bad of an example, but it's the worst I could find locally on my new machine here. Uh, this is with Git Kraken. You can see these merge commits happening all over the place. These lines that are crossing, those are all merge commits. Again, not that bad, but some people don't like this approach. Fortunately, we have rebasing. Rebasing is another option for incorporating changes between two branches. So here's how it works. The git rebase command is used to reapply commits on top of another base tip. Now that is from the documentation. That's not the way I speak, that's just from the docs. Um, but in, those, in that sentence, it tells us a little bit, reapply commits on top of another base. Rebase a branch, that's where the term comes from, meaning with this example, if we just look at the right side, ignore the text, here we have our master branch with some commits that I could merge into feature. Feature does not have those commits. Or if I use rebase, I can take this feature branch and rebase it on top of the master, meaning make the master branch the base, the new base for the feature branch. So what this means uh, is that history actually is rewritten. To move those commits, like in a diagram, it looks like I'm just dragging them around. But from Git's perspective, these commits in Cyan have to be recreated from scratch, regenerated with new hashes. They are new commits. So the changes are still the same. We won't lose work, at least if we don't screw things up, uh, but the commits themselves, the objects are different. Git merge leaves existing work alone. Git rebase does change history. So our master branch is unchanged. If we are rebasing feature onto master, we're just telling Git, recreate all of this work so that it starts at the end of master. So it's based on master. And the way that we do this is by switching to a branch, like the feature branch, and then telling Git to rebase on master. So git rebase master means take the current branch I'm on and base it off of master. And to do that, it's going to have to go through all the commits on the feature branch. And for each commit, it will create a new commit and apply them to the specified base to master in our example. So I'm gonna undo that merge commit that I just did uh, so I can demonstrate this. So I'm going to reset back to this, master three. So git reset hard, okay. So now our feature branch has these three commits and it's missing the work from master. We want Wanda's feature, we want Hagrid's feature, but I don't want to merge because I'll get a merge commit. Instead, I'm going to rebase. So here's what it looks like right now. And also, uh, I'm gonna do a git log. I'm gonna switch to that branch so I can show you, git switch feet navbar. I'm gonna do a git log here and screenshot these commit hashes, just so you can see them. And they will change. Some of them will change at least. Uh, this one won't, because this is from our master branch originally. Anyway, uh, I'm now going to run the rebase command. So git rebase. And then the branch I want to rebase 
my feature branch onto. So I want to rebase it onto the master branch. This is what it looks like right now. Here we are. I'm going to rebase it so it all will begin at the tip of the master branch. And that will require Git creating new commits for me. So they, there can be conflicts, and that's for another video. Uh, if there are conflicts, you resolve them, and you need to tell Git, keep going with the rebase. But in our case, there isn't. We've been working in different files. If I take a look, this is my history now. Nice linear history, no merge commits. And you'll notice M1, M2, and M3 are all there in a group. And then F1, F2, and F3 are all grouped together as well. This branch has now been based on the tip of that master branch. So it now has a new base and those commits have changed. So if I do, I mean, first I'll just show you, we have the changes, Wanda's feature, Hagrid's feature. We have the navbar stuff. Uh, but also if I do a git log one line again, let's see, I'll compare these screenshots or put them side by side. I'm realizing now my original screenshot, I didn't include the context of the message but we still should be able to tell it's these three commits are from F1, F2, and F3. Okay, so this is our first screenshot where we had BE2, and that still exists. That's from the master branch, this one. But then the three feature branch commits here, just take a look at their first letters, F, A, and A. Well, we don't have any of them anymore. We have one with an F, but that's from master. So the three commits from the feature branch, they all have new hashes. But again, the outcome, the actual changes are the same. Nothing has been uh, updated in terms of the work in those commits, but the commits were recreated, Git regenerated them for us, and that led to new commit hashes because of the way hashes are generated and how commits work and trees and blobs and stuff that I'm not gonna get into here. Uh, I do talk about it in my Git course <laughs> if you're curious. But anyway, uh, the work is still there, but now we have this linear history. So I want to be very clear one more time. Rebasing does rewrite history. It rewrites commits. It makes new commits based off of existing commits, and it bases them on some other branch. So if we were to compare uh, the original, if we started with this, and I used rebase, we end up with three brand new commits based upon the three existing feature commits. If we did a merge, we end up with one brand new commit and it's a merge commit. So everything else is unchanged. Two very different approaches. Nice and linear here, but rewriting history. Here, not so much linear at all, but we're also not rewriting history. So why rebase? Well, the obvious answer, so far at least, is that we get a much cleaner history. We don't get those merge commits. Everything's linear and easier to follow. And another thing that people use rebase for uh, is to actually edit history selectively to drop commits, reword them, to squash things. This is something uh, that could be a separate video. I also cover it in my Git course. Uh, so there are other use cases, but it all has to do with the fact that when we rebase, Git is going to replay these commits, each one, and generate a new commit based off of each one. So along the way, we can tell Git, actually drop that one, fix that one, squash that one. Anyway, the most important thing to know about rebasing, there's a golden rule which is never rebase commits that other people already have. Don't rebase shared work. Uh, that can be a big problem because you are rewriting history, changing commit hashes. And if other people have those commit hashes, it's up on GitHub, they've pulled it down, they've been working off of that. That's gonna be a pain to reconcile. It's not a pleasant process. So again, don't rewrite history that other people have. That's the big issue with rebasing. And that's why people can be scared of it. It's fine to use, a lot of people love rebasing. I happen to like rebasing, but this is the, the general rule you want to follow, unless you have a reason to break it, at which point you should hopefully have the confidence to know why you're breaking it. So quickly, this is getting to be a, quite a long video, uh, just to recap the differences. Merging keeps your original history intact. It is forward looking. We have a fully traceable history, but the downside is that it can be a very muddy history and lots of merge commits. Rebasing, on the other hand, is scarier, but we end up with a flat and easier to read linear history. It's nice and clean, but of course it can be dangerous. You've got to keep that golden rule in mind. 
and you can lose some context. That's more of a problem with squashing anyway, and I think that's a good place to stop for now. There's a lot more we could talk about with rebasing workflows and merging workflows and squashing and interactive rebasing, but that is for my Git course <laughs> or for a future video. All right, so I hope you learned something uh, if you're still there, and that's it.